The Locomotive Stories, Episode 3, Fall of July, Part 1. It was a busy day on the island of Sodor, and gunpowder trucks and gas tankers were delivered to the narrow gauge railway. They were delivered for new mining machines, and to blast tunnels into the ground as well. All the narrow gauge engines were assigned to deliver all of these trucks. This hill is steep. I hope I can get over it. Freddy was traveling through the tunnel and hit a bump. The cattle wagon door slid open and dumped over gunpowder. I must get these mine workers to the digging site as fast as I can. As Reneus traveled up the hill, his wheels slipped and strained. The sparks from his wheels were spraying all over the gunpowder. And then... Oh no! Gunpowder exploded into the air, sparks flying everywhere as Reneus raced away from the tunnel. The passengers were safe, but the tunnel wasn't. The fire started burning the leaves on the ground. And of course, it was a terrible mess. There's a fire at Van Rock Tunnel. We must call Flynn to put it out. Flynn was called to the scene. He gazed into the toxic smoking tunnel. I wonder what happened. At least the fire is out by itself. We'll have to investigate further to understand what happened. Hello, Reneus. Hello, Luke. Peter Sam was delivering tankers to the vine yard. He was treading carefully and cautiously, but that still didn't work out in his favor. The tanker's wheels were wonky and switched itself onto another track. Oh no, my truck is running away. The tanker slid straight off a cliff. It tumbled all the way down the hill. Finally, reaching the bottom and smashing into the ground, exploding as fumes fly everywhere. Oh my! The tanker finally went out. Peter Sam was in disbelief. Shock, frozen solid, he finally spoke. Oh goodness. I have to get to the yard and tell someone. Guys, guys, one of my tankers rolled off a hill and combusted. We need help from someone. Oh my, that's very dangerous. If the oil rolls down the hill towards anywhere, it'll cause a lot of problems. Very true. We need to call the yard with the plate down clean. Oh no! There's oil leaking out onto the hot concrete. We must puff away. Duke, Peter, Sam, and Luke raced a far distance. They were shocked as the chimney shot fire. The inside of the chimney combusted as the tankers burnt a hole through it. The fire from the tankers continued to shoot out the chimney as oil from the chimney itself combined with the fire. The fire finally stopped as the bricks were weak. The chimney toppled over. Some sparks ignited TNT from a shed as the chimney crashed down on it. Sparks spewed and fumes flew as the engines watched in horror. I feel so helpless. All we can really do is watch. The sparks were shooting so high that Peter Sam could almost feel the stings on his buffer beam. They backed up as they continued to stare at it statically. The fire finally died off, leaving a bending, burning roof and a crippled chimney. We need to get some help! Mighty Mac puffed into Crayshell Yard to collect tankers. Ready when you are. Okay, let's go. Mac, why are you putting your brakes on? I'm not, you are. How am I putting my brakes on if I'm pulling? Well, I'm pushing. What do you explain is not moving? I don't know. 
Oh, maybe it weighs too much. We're the same engine. We need to pull these tankers. Oh no, the coupling. Do you have the supplies? Yes. I have the trucks right here. We can finally begin demolishing the old shed. Yes, let's start right away. The demolition team set up the TNT inside the shed, when suddenly... Finally, all set. We can demolish it. What's that cloud Oh no! Tankers! What are we going to do? We had to switch the points! The points slammed as Victor's life flashed before his eyes! The tankers blew up in Victor's face! It combusted inside the shed, making heat grow really fast! The explosion set off the TNT. Isabella watched in horror, petrified by the thought that she could not help her friend Victor. The roof collapsed down into Victor, leaving sparks to fly into the air. The sparks flew so high that you could see it over the mountains of the narrow gauge railway. There were flames shooting out of the windows that had already been previously taken down. Everyone stay back! This plane is very dangerous! Victor's driver, who had previously been talking to the demolition team, called Flynn to save the day. With one final blast, Flynn's water hose finally put out the fire. With the last of Flynn's water, the fire was out. The site was a mess. The floor was soaked and the shed was burnt at the same time. No one knew if Victor was still there if his soul still stands. But whatever happens, they all have to be prepared for what they find under the damage and the rubble. They hoped to not find Victor in a totaled state. Their fear engulfed them as they start to realize what had happened right in front of them. He could be burned alive. They'll see in just a moment. I'm going to get help right away. I'm so scared to see what damage has been done. As Rusty pulled up to the tankers, everyone waited to see what had happened to him. Rusty pulled out one tanker, and then Rusty pulled out the second one. <gasps> You're okay! Oh, good, good. Let's pull you out and get into the steamworks right away! Flynn pulled and pulled. He strained because Victor's wheels had been melted and damaged. He knew he had the strength to pull him back onto the rails, and with a mighty heave... Thank you. No problem. I'm sorry that this happened. I hope you're very well soon. It's fine, my friend. It's just the sacrifices you have to make for others sometimes. Let's go to the steamworks. We're all just glad that you're okay. Thank you. Thank you all for putting effort in getting me free and making sure I'm fine. Goodbye. I hope you know this wasn't an accident. All of this wasn't an accident. On the next part, we'll find out exactly who caused all of this.